Još jedno izdanje emisije Oni vole Srbiju, još jedna košarkaška priča. Danas ćemo imati prilike da upoznamo bivšeg igrača Crvene zvezde, sadašnjeg igrača Makabija iz Tel Aviva. On je ostao upamćen među navijačima, pamtimo njegove sjajne partije, posebno meč protiv Olimpijakosa kada je postigao 34 poena. Naravno, u pitanju je Lorenzo Brown, idemo da ga upoznamo. Sokerbet, pravi igrači na pravo mesto, a sada na svako mesto. Kako? Na preko hiljadu moj kiosk lokacija možeš da uplatiš depozit bez provizije. Isto to u Alta Pay na oko 800 lokacija. Topina. Čekate i bonus dobrodošlice i takmičenje za stan u Beogradu na vodi. Moramo da kažemo svima daj da snim. Već smo snimili, a? Pravi igrači na pravo mesto, na svakom mesto. Kurkuma Cream Hot Kremu koristim kod osoba koje imaju hronične tegobe, koji godinama muče. Vole ih leđa, vrat, zglobovi, na rukama i na nogama. Posebno ujutru osjećaju bol i ukočenost. Preporučujem je svima. Gde je reuma, tu je i krema kurkuma. Lorenzo, thank you so much for being here. Give me a plan. Hello, man. How are you doing? I'm you great. Good? How are you? Thank you. Thank I'm you for good. having me. I'm good. Thank you. Are you happy to be back in Belgrade? I am. It's it's a very interesting uh, way to be back, but I love to be here. A few years ago, you used to play for Zvezda, and since you left, a lot of things happened in your career, a lot of amazing things, but let's talk about this a little bit later. Now, now I would like to talk about your beginnings. I would like to have a jump in the past. You were born in Rockford, right? Yes. But when yes. you were eight years old, your family moved to Atalanta, and in Atalanta started your basketball journey. Yes, Do you remember sure. your first contact with basketball? Uh, yes, for sure. Um, well, I started with my uncle, uh, Darrell Banks. Um, he played uh, in college, and um, it was like we all looked up to him, my brothers and sisters and cousins. So uh, I guess that what started this whole basketball thing for us, or for me as well. Um, so, I mean, following his footsteps put a basketball in my hand, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here now. Yeah, I mean, like, but can you remember your first practice? Who took you to your first practice? Uh, it was actually uh, when I moved to Atlanta. Uh, I moved to this place called Marietta, Georgia. Uh -huh. And uh, this lady that lived downstairs from me, her, uh, her son, he had a youth basketball team. Uh -huh. And uh, we were down there randomly one day, and my mom asked, you know, just talked to him a little bit, and. He offered to take me to the practice one day, and you know, I played on his team until I was like maybe 10 or 11 years okay. old. And this is like how the story started. So yes. Lorenzo's story started, but um, you were talking about yourself when you were little. You were kind of obsessed, right, with basketball. So you love what you do. I got it. But can you tell us something about Lorenzo Brown that we don't know, but we should know about you? That you should know. Yeah. Uh, that you should know. Does <laughs> something about me that you should know. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big family guy. I put my family before anything, and I love I love dogs. Um, I have a small dog myself. Looking to have more in the future, but how I travel and move around a lot, I can't really have that in my life right now. So that's kind of a thing for me. I love pets. I love animals. And, uh, you know, I love movies. Mm -hmm. TV shows are big for me. Um, you know, that's pretty, pretty much it, <laughs> to tell you the truth. I remember once that you were talking about yourself when you were a teenager. Right. And you said that you were a little bit immature. Is that true? That thanks to basketball, you bec become a man? For sure. What did you mean? Uh, so, you know, as a kid, you always, you think is life as a game. You know, you always want to go outside, play with your friends and, you know, and things of that nature. But I mean, with basketball, it kind of put me in situations to where I had to grow up sometimes mm -hmm. and take things a lot more seriously when it came down to like in the game situations or making the right plays or, you know, if somebody else is frustrated on the, on the team, okay. have to step up and, you know, maybe 
calm the situation down the best way I can. And things like that put you in a different mindset yeah. with growing up. And also just being by myself sometimes, I would, uh, like I guess, act out situations in the game. So if like I'm counting down like five, four, three, two, one, and I would like shoot a game winner, okay. and I'm completely by myself in the gym. So okay. it kind of prepared me for like game time situations. Okay. So I was just, you know, I would just be doing things like that and it kind of helped me mature as an individual. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. So it prepared you for a game, hard game situation that you matured to grow up as a person and even to face some difficult situation that can happen. This right. is life. Right. And I remember this situation in 2016 when you signed with Unix cousin, but unfortunately the contract was voided and they even told you that you will never play about the ball again, right? Yeah. So what happened? Uh, with that with that situation, I still don't know what was the issue. Um, I mean, I have like, a, I guess you could say a heart condition, uh, but I've had it my whole life. So it's, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's like a big deal. Okay. So I, I don't think they were too aware of the situation at first. And they, I don't think they knew about it or had the knowledge to know anything about what was going on. So when I got there, I did my medical test and everything like that. And, uh, you know, I sat out for maybe like two weeks because they didn't know what was the issue. So I would. I ended up having to leave because I was just sitting around and yeah. pretty much just wasting my time when I was there. And I could have been playing in the G League or whatever other league that was available for me at the time. So, I mean, when they told me that I couldn't play again, I kind of lost all hope. Okay. Because I don't really know. I'm not a doctor, so I don't really know what was, what they were thinking or what they saw that I didn't know about. So I just went back home and sat around, moped around for a little bit and tried to pick myself back up. Okay. How did you overcome that? Because you were very little. Uh, I mean, you had 24, 20, Yeah, I was like yeah. 20, 24. So yeah, I was around that age, but I mean, that's still old enough to, you know, have the accountability for yourself to not give up or find a way to pick yourself back up even though you hear something like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I sat around for maybe like, maybe a, a month or so. Mm -hmm. And that's when the, I, I, got a, I got more doctor results and everything was fine from, from the states, from the state side. And I got a contract to play in the CBA. I think that your second season in G League was the best so far in the, in the states. Yes, most definitely, uh, G League, for sure, it gave me an opportunity to showcase my skills. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was it was tough just trying to find who I was as a player at the time because you know, as you, as you say, you're growing up and you're trying to figure out the the route to take mm -hmm. as far as uh, who you are becoming as a basketball player and as a person at the same time. But the G League, my first few seasons were rough because it was so up and down. Um, I would. Mm -hmm. play a few games and get caught up, play a few games and get caught up. So I never really had a whole season in the G mm -hmm. League as a G League player. Okay. Um, but the second the second go round, I had a two-way contract with the Raptors. Mm -hmm. And that's what really uh, boosted my stock as an individual mm -hmm. and kind of helped me get to where I am here. Right. So Lorenzo, you had uh, two experiences in the CBA, in the Chinese Championship. So this is a championship that emerged as a good option for some players. So how was your experience in China? What did you learn from that experience? Oh man, my experience in China was very, it was, it was good and great. And it was kind of difficult at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, because I, you know, it's, China is a different place for anybody if you ever, ever been. Like it's, I wouldn't say you're not allowed to, but it's very difficult to, move around like how we are now. Okay. Um, because you're placed in a hotel, really nice hotels at that though, but you're at a top floor hotel, they treat you amazing. Okay. Um, you have food, whatever you want at the hotel, but I don't think uh, a lot of guys 
leave their hotel rooms when they're there. So, okay. Okay. both times I was in China, it was only for two months. Mm -hmm. And I was back in the G League after that, trying to pursue my NBA career. I personally think that you were just born to do this, to play basketball. You have a big passion, and I can hear that when I'm talking to you. And you mentioned before the G League, and you did amazing in G League, Thank right? You. Would you yes. like to share with us this experience? I mean, you played for Phoenix, uh, Toronto Raptors, you spent five seasons playing this NBA, you play CBA, and for the first time with Zvezda, you played EuroLeague. And uh, it's completely different, right? You're really from uh, NBA because especially in uh, Europe, in Europe teams tend to emphasize on the movement, passing, ball control, rather than individual score. So was it difficult to get used to this style when you came here? Uh, yes, a little bit, honestly. Um, when I first got here to Europe, um, I really didn't know what to expect. I just heard, I just heard a lot about it being more physical. Um, guys being a lot more smarter on the court because of the decision making and how how packed thin it was on the defensive end so I mean that was the only few things I was expecting to you know to get accustomed to but when I when I got here it was what I what I thought you know it was a lot more physical um, a lot more the guys were a lot smarter and it gave me a whole it gave me a college feel that's why I always say it's a, it gives, Euro League gives me a college feel, but with bigger, smarter, and more competitive guys okay. out here. So that's, it was kind of the, like I say, it was kind of the same thing, but you know, I got, I got used to it pretty fast. Mm -hmm. You like playing Euro League? Yes, I love it. I love that. I love every single away game, every single home game that I'm involved in because you can feel the energy as soon as you step into the, to the arena. So that's what I love about it the most. I have a lot of questions, but I think that we should sit and continue the conversation inside and talk maybe a little bit about Zvezda, Maccabi, and EuroLeague, okay? Okay, for sure. Šta čitam? Sokerbet. Pravi igrači na pravo mesto. A sada na svako mesto. Kako? Na preko 1000 moj kiosk lokacija možeš da uplatiš depozit bez provizije. Au. Isto to u AltaPay na oko 800 lokacija. Dopina. Čekate i bonus dobrodošlice i takmičenje za stan u Beogradu na vodi. Moramo da kažemo svima daj da snim. <laughs> Već smo snimili, a? Pravi igrači na pravo mesto. <clears throat> na svakom mestu. Kurkuma Cream Hot Kremu koristim kod osoba koje imaju hronične tegobe, koji ih godinama muče. Vole ih leđa, vrat, zglobovi, na rukama i na nogama. Posebno ujutru osjećaju bol i ukočenost. Preporučujem i svima. Gde je reuma, tu je i krema kurkuma. So before we were talking about your experience with Zvezda, so you said that the season in Zvezda changed you a lot. So what did you mean? Can you share this with us? Uh, yeah, so the season in Zvezda changed me as a player and as a person because I was, you know, I was able to figure myself out here as for sure as a European basketball player. Um, it gave me the opportunity to, you know, pick myself up from where I left off in the G League and become who I am here today. So um, I, it was very much appreciated, even though it was cut short by COVID. Um, I was still able to, you know, figure, figure myself out as a European basketball player. That season was uh, very particular, weird. I don't know what objective to use because it was canceled due to COVID, but what do you remember from that season? Uh, yeah, what I remember most was the fan base because okay. um, it was actually my first experience having a European fan base and I think it was kind of interesting because I came into one of the best in the world. So um, I particularly remember the game, Partizan games. Um, it was interesting because they were, I was told that they couldn't be in the same arena at the same time. So I didn't realize that and I just thought, you know, it was going to be half and half, but the entire gym was Zesda, and mm -hmm. you know, you can just feel, you can feel the floor shaking. So yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, everybody in Europe says that this is the hottest court 
in Europe. So how do you, would you describe Zvezda bands? Man, electrifying. Oh, electrifying. That's a <laughs> word I can uh, pick out from my vocabulary, I guess. Uh, you know, because it's you know you feel the you feel the energy just walking around Serbia because you have you have both sides of Partizan and uh, Red Star, so you know you don't know who's who until you walk up on somebody and they tell you, oh, I'm Red Star, oh, I'm Partizan. But I feel like when I was here, I was getting more of a, a Red Star feel. But you feel the love they have for basketball, the passion they have for this sport. Yes, yes, I, I, you know, like I said, when when I when I got here, even now, you, I still get love walking around the city, and I think that's pretty cool to have people still remember me from four or five years ago. You know what I remember? I remember that amazing game you had against Olympiacos. You scored 34 points. So do you remember that game? Yes, most definitely. Yeah. I think that was a breakout game for me. Um, I think that game put people on notice of who I am as a player and that I could not only pass the ball, but score as well. So, and it was kind of on the peak of the season ending due to the COVID thing. So it kind of gave a boost to what I had for my future plans. In the future, you sign with the different teams. You play for Fenerbahce, for Unix, and Maccabi. And we can see that you're feeling very comfortable in Maccabi. And you said that it's amazing to work with Coach Katash, yes. that he's the most influential coach in your career. So how is working with Coach Katash? Uh, working with Coach Katash is, you know, it's been amazing because he was a point guard as well. Uh, he's put me in situations to where I have to make decisions and be a leader on the court and off the court. So uh, with him doing that, it's helping me grow, helping me mature even though, you know, I'm a mature adult right now, but I'm still maturing as a player. And I'm holding myself accountable for the things that I do on and off the court. I think that, I personally think that your best season so far was in Maccabi, the season after the European Championship and the EuroLeague put you in the top five players, right? With Zenko, Musa, Tavares and Lesor. So it was a good recognition. Yes, for sure. Uh, like I, like you said, uh, Katasha, he's doing his job. He's a different coach for Europe. He doesn't, he doesn't walk around yelling at you or he doesn't get out of character. He's always calm, collective, and I feel like it helps us as a team because if he shows too much emotion, I feel like sometimes guys can panic and forget what's going on out there and forget the task at hand. And the way he coaches, his coaching style is, and his personality as a human being is, is I feel like is the right approach for our team. Where do you see Maccabi in the EuroLeague this season? Uh, for this year, I see Maccabi top, Five sixteen this year. Um, we have a, a few good pieces we put on our team. Um, so I think those will be like the X factors. We have some main guys that came back from last year. Um, and, you know, I feel like for us guys that are back this year, it's an opportunity for us to show that we are, how can I say, a, a, as great as a team that people think we are. When it comes to the Final Four, who do you think will play the Final Four? You really Final Four. Final Four teams for this year. Of course, I'm going to say Maccabi for sure. Real Madrid, uh, Barca, and um, pick a head to head with uh, Red Star and Partizan, maybe. Yeah, I'll pick between those those two teams for the third and fourth place. So, uh, Lorenzo, I said before that your best season so far was after the European Championship, and I would like to mention this chapter of your life. That was a very specific year for the Spanish national team because a lot of legendary players retired for the national team. Other players like Ricky Rubio, Alothen, Lul were injured, and Scariolo gave you your chance to play for the national team. You did amazing. You did amazing. You and Juan Fernando Gomez were the leaders 
of Spain. And can you tell us more about that night in Berlin when you won over France? Yes, for sure. So uh, that night was very different for me um, because I wasn't expecting us to be there. It was my first time playing in a FIBA uh, tournament like that. And I was surrounded by a group of guys who were, who were already experienced enough to be there and they've been there before. Um, and, you know, they kind of uh, pushed me to, how can I say, push me to be there mentally like they were. Um, with, you know, with Rubio and uh, with the uh, Heron Gomez brothers, they were, they were all accustomed to the, the FIBA style of play and, you know, and it gave me a boost of, a boost of courage, I should say. Um, but they they held me they held me accountable. They they wanted me to they wanted to see me do well, and they also wanted to win even more. So that whole that whole day was cool, man. Uh, France the French team was great great team, but you know we came out on top. Uh, coach had a game plan and we followed it and went through, and it worked out for the best. I presume, I'm not sure that that gold medal means a lot to you, even because uh, people were against you playing for the national team, right? So we have a similar situation here in Serbia with Kevin Punter last summer. Some people were saying that he should, must not play for the national team. Others people were like, okay, let's give him a chance. But what's your point of view? Do you think that foreigners should play for another national team? Uh, yes, in my opinion, uh, if the opportunity presents itself, I don't see why not. Um, I think some guys spend enough time over here in Europe to where they feel like it's their home. We all speak one language when we step on that court, and it's basketball. Um, and for guys that's trying to, you know, create a new lane for themselves and create a new home and create new friendships and create new families, I think that's an opportunity for for us in general, uh, me as a foreigner. And like you said, people didn't accept that I was joining the Spanish national team. Maybe even some players didn't accept it, but once I got there, the whole situation changed. I feel like I was open to the opportunity. Um, you know, I, I've never gotten a chance to play with the USA team. And now it's presented myself so I can play with the Spanish team. Um, learning Spanish every single day. Um, right. Actually, it's an opportunity for me to be a different person to who I was two or three years ago. So every day I'm getting smarter. Every day I'm learning new things. And I think the joining that Spanish national team has brought that to me. You show that you care about the national team. So would you like to play again for the Spanish national team? Yes, most definitely. I'll be there this summer. Um, I, right. I'm excited. I've talked to the guys about it. I've talked to coaches. I've talked to, you know, the board about everything. So I'm just, I'm just ready to get, get there and win another gold medal. So, Larry, thank you so much for this interview. Would you like to say something to the audience? Wrap up. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, thank you for the long support. Uh, it's been amazing and. Hopefully I can see you, some of you guys out there supporting me on the court and hope it's a blessed one.